Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, welcome to the tools and techniques of um, immunology that we are using. So, in last class we are discussing about immunodiffusion. So, we purify antigen, we inject antigen to animo, we have some antibody, uh, we hope some antibody is there initially and then we check the presence of antibody in serum with a very simple uh, technique. You just need uh, precipitate agarose and uh, your um, antigen and antibody to see the precipitin line and we also discuss about why precipitin line is formed, what is the logic of this precipitin line, why uh, how diffusion work. But that can tell you that okay, the antibody production is going on, but it cannot tell you exactly how much um, amount or quantitation is uh, there. Right. So, if you want to quantitate any antigen or antibody, what we do is normally, so uh, normally what we are going to do this, we are going to use a very popular technique, many of you might have heard about that, in short it is called ELISA. Okay. In short it is called ELISA, E L I S A. ELISA stands for what? That is also many of you know, but still I am writing it is enzyme linked immunosorbent. I just wrote purposefully this uh, S bigger immunosorbent assay. Okay. Enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. That technique, I mean this technique is very, very popular and routinely used for many labs in the pathological lab for detection of many things like we hormone detection, uh, quantification. So, these particular techniques, I am just not going to go the experimental detail because it will take lot of time and you may not need at this stage, but just going to tell you how you can do that. What you can do with this experiment? We can do first detection. Okay. What we detect? We can do detection of detection of what? Detection of either antigen or antibody. We can detect both. Again, I am telling you if you need to do anything for antibody, you need to have antigen, and if you want to know something about antigen, you have to have antibody against that antigen. Okay. So, either one you can do. And second, mostly it, I mean uh, very importantly what you can do is you can do estimate. Okay. You can estimation you can do. So, estimation of either antigen or antibody you can do. What is the principle? All the principle I mean general principle of all immunotechnics are antigen binds to antibody or antibody binds to antigen they interact. So, their interaction we are going to detect. So, what we do here? What we do in immunology, I mean ELISA. ELISA we do is actually we take a well, okay, that is a plastic well. Normally, you can do it in a tube also, but normally we use 96 well plate, okay. 96 well plate. We also call it micro titer plate, micro titer plate. Okay. So, micro titer plate also or either one this is same thing, what it is there? It is there are 12 well 1, 2, 3 up to then 12 and there are 8 rows. Okay. So, in one row there are 12 and at the top of the plastic it is written 1, 2 and then gradually 12, 1, 2 and this side in the column wise it is written A, B, C. So, then you have 8. So, total is 
8 times 12. So, it is a 12 into 8 is equal to 96 well plate. Okay. So, 12 in each row and there are uh, 8 in uh, 12 in each row and there are 8 rows. Okay. In one row there are 12 wells and if I see this well big way, okay, if I I am um, just uh, erasing this part. So, if I see one of the well like this big, what I will see is this well this you have to buy you have to call like there are many 96 well plate for different purpose. Okay. So, you have to go when you are buying you have to plate ELISA plate what is the uh, difference between other plate because you can grow cell also in this 96 well plate this is a format 96 well is a format but you have to buy a 96 well ELISA plate what is there this is in the case of ELISA this well bottom or the wall of the well is coated with polyvinyl chloride what is the purpose of this polyvinyl chloride because it can adsorb protein because you know antigen is mostly protein that we are working with and antibody is definitely a protein. Okay. So, if antibody and antigen is a protein and PVC what the role of PVC because antigen antibody can attach to it, it or adsorb with it. So, what we do? What we do? So, this plate is or the well is PVC coated. Now, if I want to see that in a given solution if antibody is there or not what I will do is first I will add some pure antigen here. So, I will take antigen solution, okay. antigen solution, antigen solution I will add. Okay. So, if, you, if, I, if I fill this antigen, uh, if I fill this with the antigen solution and keep it for some time, what will happen? Suppose the antigen color is red, okay. antigen is say like this or make it circle, It'll, my life will be easy. So, then if you keep this antigen solution everywhere, it is everywhere antigen is fill up. Okay. So, there are a lot of antigen molecule here and if you keep it after certain time, what will happen? After certain time means maybe one hour, maybe overnight depending on how much antigen you have, what we will see is we will see that antigen is attached to it the bottom of the well and the wall of the well. Okay. So, antigen is attached with the wall you cannot see anything, you just have to believe that antigen is attached. Then every step I am not going to repeat because I am not going to discuss about the total techniques like how exactly it work, what is the problem, I will just tell you the principle. So, every time you use, you use or we use any reagent next step is you have to wash out okay, because this solution I mean the solution you added was full right, whole well was full of that. So, what will happen? Some will attach here, okay. some will attach here, but all lot of solution will be there. So, you have to wash with just phosphate buffered saline. Normally, we use P B S, okay. phosphate buffered saline. You can type this P B S and see what is the composition is sodium chloride, phosphate, because it is a saline after all. So, the what is the composition? So, it is not important here. So, we wash with PBS, so what will happen all unbound and extra thing will be washed out. So, now when washing is done, when washing is complete this is the case. Now, in this stage there are few things we call it blocking, I am not discussing here just see what is happening. In this in this stage if suppose the antibody is uh, let me change the color green. So, now I will add in after this washing is done I will add antibody solution okay. that may be directly serum or diluted. Okay. So, now if that serum has uh, antibody against your antigen what will happen? They will bind here wherever antibody antigen is there they will bind. Okay. It is depend now I am just making it saturated. So, if antibody amount is well enough what will happen that will bind all the antigen available. If you have less antigen I mean less amount of antibody maybe some antigen will be free it is not going to bound. Okay. 
So, now in this case I assume that all antigen is covered by antibody molecule even after that you incubate for some time wash out. So, this is now the condition you cannot see that clear because it is colorless. Now, what happened two possibility now we have to detect the antibody whether antibody is there or not okay. because basically we are going to see the just a plastic. So, to do that whether antibody is really attached to it first thing is the antibody solution I added it may or may not have antibody because that is what we are going to test. Second if it is there how much it is there both we can so then we have to detect. So, detection I am telling you first the simpler way though it technically it is little more difficult suppose this antibody solution that antibody what I can do is I can make some uh, I can make some attachment with it. Okay. What is this attachment? So, I make the antibody in such a way or purify the antibody and modify the antibody such a way I attach one enzyme. I attached one enzyme with this antibody. Okay. I attach to an enzyme with this antibody clear. So, this antibody uh, this enzyme again colorless you cannot see. So, when I am attaching adding this so every antibody has this enzyme okay. everybody every antibody was attached to it this enzyme that is why the name anti uh, enzyme linked is coming. Okay, this name enzyme link sorry the name enzyme link is coming because the antibody is attached to it enzyme. Okay. So, then this enzyme also you cannot see. So, when antibody I add actually I added the enzyme linked antibody. So, if enzyme is linked and this enzyme what we use here this is generally horse radish peroxidase okay. name is very common there are many enzyme in the world okay. not every enzyme we can use there are a certain point for that, but the enzyme we use horse radish peroxidase it is actually peroxidase is the enzyme and horse radish is the source it is a plant material it is no horse it is a horse radish is a plant there is no animal business though its name is horse. Okay. Another is alkaline phosphatase. Why these two enzyme? Because these enzyme are very stable in room temperature. You don't need any special incubator for that. You can do the whole thing in uh, just room temperature. They are very stable. They are active, and not only that, both the enzyme has a very good property because they have this enzyme has a substrate commercially available, which is colorless. Okay. Sorry. This enzyme has a substrate which is colorless, okay. but they can give a product which is colored, which is colored. Okay. So, they have a substrate which is colorless, but their product is colorful not only that they have a product which is which is water soluble. So, that means they have a water soluble colored product that is why these two enzyme they are very stable in room temperature they can work they have a substrate colorless and colorful product. So, why this is important because what we do is after adding that we we add this substrate here and incubate in solution what will happen after certain time may be 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes you see the color is developed. So, what will what we will see actually we will see that the well which was nothing that solution suppose this solution is green okay that solution is green and that then whole solution will be like green here 
okay whole tube will be clean and depending on depending on how much I mean so now the question is this is the whole technique. So, you uh, immobilize the enzyme I mean antigen then you add your serum and serum contain antibody which is attached with uh, enzyme and then if you add the substrate it will give color and color solution because it is water soluble. Okay. Now, the question is if there is no antigen you there no antibody will bind if no antibody no enzyme is there no color that means if I am working suppose I am checking the antigen whether some solution has antigen or not. So, in that case antibody is known antigen is unknown. So, so uh, one solution is given okay. suppose this uh, uh, this water bottle. So, I am saying this water bottle has some antigen I would like to check. Okay. So, some contamination is there. So, what I can do is I can take little bit of this water add this in that tube in that well incubate for some time and then the antigen I am looking for I am saying that this water contains some typhoid um, bacteria. So, do not give me I challenge there is typhoid bacteria. So, that means some typhoid antigen will be there. So, if I take that solution isolate that bacterial extract and add it if and uh, some of you will say no back this water is uh, completely pure there is no bacteria I would like to check what I can do is I can take that water extract the protein add it. So, then repeat this thing uh, whole thing and the antibody I will give anti typhoid antibody clear. So, if this water has the antigen it will this red thing will come and if this red thing comes and then your um, uh, antibody will bind and at the end if I uh, I will see the color if color develops then I am right that means this um, particular water that I was showing you has the uh, typhoid bacteria, but if there is no color developed to after repeated uh, experiment that means there is no antigen no antigen means there is no antigen in the water clear. So, this way it can tell you that whether this particular well has antigen or not same way if antigen is fixed I know antigen is pure and definitely antibody will you can test. So, if antigen I am sure it is there if serum or antibody solution which is unknown if I add it and gives the color that means you have antibody in your uh, solution if there is no antibody that means no color. So, either one we can figure it out whether antigen is there or not then at one thing you have to is supposed to be known if antigen is known antibody you can measure is antibody is known antigen you can measure. Now, depending on how many antigen is there the intensity of color will change because more antigen more antibody more enzyme that means more color will develop ok. So, one more rea one enzyme can have multiple reaction same way you may have 10 molecule of antigen or how, I mean let us see how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 3 3 3 9 antigen molecule I have added. So, now if your solution has 5 antibody molecule so then what will happen then it will happen then suppose this is not there this is not there this is not there only say uh, this 5 will be there. So, if this 5 is there what will happen automatically your uh, uh, green part will be less less green solution. So, depending on the intensity also you can tell how much antigen or how much antibody is there because spectrophotometry we can measure this solution I mean measure the spectrophotometry the measure the intensity of this solution everything is standard substrate is standard everything is commercially available. So, you do not have to do much. Okay. So, that way ELISA can tell you the amount how you can tell the exact amount you just have to do a standard curve I am sure you did some DNA estimation or protein estimation in biochemistry lab. Okay, in that what you did you first you did a standard curve known amount. So, what you have to do is uh, you have to do basically you have to make multiple well okay, where you have to give known amount of amount say 
1 microgram, then 2 microgram, then 4 microgram, then 8 microgram. Okay, known amount of suppose I am measuring the antigen. So, known amount of antigen if you give what will happen every one so and then make a plot this is OD versus this is uh, concentration or amount of antigen. Okay, this is antigen concentration. Okay, so, in 1 microgram in, in this one you will get some OD plot it 2 microgram you will get some 4 microgram you will get some 8 you will get some. So, what will happen you will get a straight line it may go with through the origin it may not go the, through the origin. Then in one solution this one this is say uh, unknown okay, that you do not know this is unknown that you want to measure what you can do is you will get some OD say x that x OD I am taking another color for uh, so that x to x OD suppose come here this is known standard this is called standard curve. So, if unknown OD come here what we can do is this is the OD and if you go back from the slope also you can calculate if you go back whatever the concentration you will get here this is the concentration of antigen here. So, that is how we can exact very closely measure the amount of antigen present in a given solution and most of the hormone we measure now in pathological laboratory we use ELISA. You might have heard the HIV detection is through ELISA the primary screening whether it is there or not ELISA test is so common. So, that is how it is. So, if anything is there you will get color if it is not there no color. So, having color means it is there. Okay. So, this is more or less uh, the uh, primary part that, that uh, what is uh, there. So, in this case what we have is in this well we had antigen Okay, I am just now drawing one just for easy you had antigen then we add antibody which was labeled with a enzyme, but we can do second this is when the antibody the first antibody is attached with enzyme we call it direct detection. Okay. It is called direct detection but sometimes it is not always possible because you isolate uh, the antibody the serum labeling it with enzyme it may or may not be possible in all the labs. So, there is no problem for that also what you can do is you can buy anti antibody that is why I was talking about anti uh, antibody anti idiotype in a previous class. So, you can buy suppose this is uh, the antibody which is raised in rabbit okay, rabbit antibody. So, I can buy anti rabbit suppose this is rabbit i g g you are use you raise the antibody in rabbit and after booster first booster is mostly i g g. So, you can buy anti rabbit um, say goat i g g that means, goat rabbit i g g was injected in goat and antibody was raised. So, if this is the antibody if this color is say red no not red say green. So, if this color of this antibody is green where it will bind it will bind to this antibody because it is raised that way. So, this antibody you can buy commercial it is commercially available you can buy anti rabbit anti human anti goat anti mouse whatever anti antibody you want you can buy commercially and not only the only antibody you can buy anti rabbit goat IgG attached to it enzyme. What enzyme whether you would like HRP or alkaline phosphatase up to your choice no problem because both are commercially available. And it mostly what happened actually it depends which lab you are working what is their availability. In my lab HRP is working so if you join in my laboratory you will work with HRP, but generally it is same, but definitely there are certain advantage disadvantage of both the enzymes, but that is not very important for estimation I mean in this kind I mean for this class. So, this enzyme linked secondary this is called so this one called primary antibody which is my major interest this is primary antibody also designated like 1 degree and this is called 
this is called secondary antibody secondary antibody or 2 degree. So, this secondary antibody which is enzyme linked same now just one step extra and one hour extra then this is same now if you give substrate it will give product you will get color and this kind of using secondary antibody to do ELISA is called indirect detection indirect detection. first one is direct because the primary antibody was labeled with enzyme this is second okay. and this is actually the simple principle of ELISA. So, the ELISA that we just discussed this is a state forward ELISA either I mean you can do both way you can first immobilize the an antigen or you can immobilize the antibody then you can do, but very common ELISA which is called sandwich ELISA that is what is this sandwich ELISA you know sandwich right that we eat. So, what is there two bread okay. sandwich is two bread and in between there you can put whatever you like. What is there in sandwich ELISA which same well same PVC coated well, but it is little bit more specific why it is more specific. Say suppose there is one antigen, one antigen has two different epitope that now you know one is circular and another is triangular say it looks like that. So, now if this is this is the and uh, this is the kind of antigen here what will happen first and we are going to use two different antibody one antibody can bind this and another antibody can bind this that is the sandwich how. So, first suppose I use this green antibody. So, I immobilize okay, everywhere I immobilize three antibody is there just to make life simple. So, here after this three antibody these they are also protein if you coat it will um, immobilize there then you add the antigen what will happen as soon as you add antigen okay, let me right here as soon as you add antigen it will bind like this ok. So, first you immobilize the antibody then you add antigen one of the epitope attached. So, if by any chance there is a mistake or some non specific interaction it happened because it is a protein protein interaction some non specific can always happen just to eliminate that to make it more specific. I am going to use another antibody what antibody this red one. So, now this red one bind here right. So, this structure will happen ok. So, this one will happen if you see this if you see this this kind of structure will happen. So, then if this red which is coming second or if I draw this flat way, so it will be better. So, one antibody here instead of making this one antibody here then like this ok. So, then second antibody will come I will just I just reverse this thing. So, let me uh, draw areas this just to avoid confusion. So, if this is the case the second antibody will bind like this and this is your uh, this is the well ok this is the well where everything is happening. If this particular antibody the second antibody for example, is enzyme linked 
what is going to happen same thing same enzyme HRP or alkaline phosphatase and you give the substrate and you have you and then you have product here. Okay, you have product here principle it exactly same same enzyme same substrate same OD you can measure, but what is this this sandwich ELISA will give you more specificity because you are using two antibody to detect one antigen. So, by any chance if one antigen uh, one antibody non specifically bind another will not. Okay. So, suppose one antibody suppose in this case here um, in this case suppose this antibody okay, bind something bind something like this, but the other epitope other epitope is not triangular, but square. Okay. So, if this is the by in mistake it binds the other one will not bind because the green one will not bind to the square. So, even in the primary time this thing happened the second antibody is not specific to this. So, it will not bind. So, you can eliminate, but if you do the single that all four will be detected, but here as you do the sandwich one will be eliminated because the second antibody will not recognize the antigen which is not really you want that will increase the specificity or it will give you more accurate result in comparison to single antibody. Here also you can do direct indirect this is called sandwich ELISA is that clear. So, here also you can have standard carb you can have uh, this uh, uh, estimation detection, but normally sandwich ELISA we use for accurate estimation is clear. So, this is ELISA, but here what we can do we can measure antigen concentration we can detect antigen in a given solution. We can measure antibody concentration in a given sol uh, sorry this uh, we can measure antibody concentration in a given solution or we can detect whether antibody is present in a given solution or not. Okay. So, this is actually ELISA what we called. Okay. So, this is uh, for today in next lecture we are going to discuss about immunoblotting. Okay. Immunoblotting is very similar principle, but slightly different it is also known as western blotting. Okay. So, see you in the next lecture.